chances are if you click this video, then you're like most ICT traders and you have an understanding of the concepts, but you don't have a clear way to implement them. And whenever you get in front of a screen, you kind of just freeze like a deer in the headlights. All the stuff that you watch on videos seems so clear. And then you get in front of a live chart where you actually have to trade and make money. The reason we're all here and you have no idea what to do. Well, in this video, I'm going to solve all of that for good because I'm going to go all the way from the top down from a blank chart all the way down to a trade entry. Now, look, I've been trading ICT for years and I've been day trading overall for eight years and I've tried everything. So I know what works and what doesn't. And the reason that I know what doesn't work is because I used to blow all my accounts. But now since then, I have made multiple six figures in withdrawals from prop firms. And even in the last days, I made over a hundred grand trading. So believe me, I know what works. I'm not only going to show you how to analyze based on price, but I'm going to show you how to use time to get the highest probability trade setups. So enough of the chit chat, let's hop on a chart. So let's go ahead and hop right into it. So top down analysis, a lot of times it's overcomplicated and I think it can be overwhelming, but I'm going to share with you right now a practical approach that anybody can learn. So whenever we're talking about top down analysis, we want to break it down into three key parts, right? Time, price, and the economic calendar. So when it comes to time, we're going to be using the power of three and quarterly theory and also kill zones. No, they are not the same thing. I know a lot of people think time and price and ICT is just kill zones. Well, it's not. We're going to break that down. As far as price goes, we're going to talk about which time frames to use, how to make sure that you're using the right time frames together. And then I'm going to show you how every single time there is a retracement or expansion on the higher time frame, it is a lower time frame market maker model. Now, if these concepts don't make sense to you, that's totally cool. We're going to break them all down in this video. So just pay attention, don't get overwhelmed, and we're going to break everything down. With the economic calendar, we're going to talk about how to deal with red folder news and how to deal with no news days. So first, we're going to talk about price. So let's go ahead and jump into time frame alignment. So when we're talking about time frame alignment and which time frames we're going to use, I want to be very clear that no matter what pairing of these time frames you use, that you're always mapping out the weekly and daily charts. And we're going to show you how to do this in a second. But right here, I want you to take a look at these time frames. And if you need to take some notes right here or, you know, put this somewhere where you're going to remember, because these are the time frame pairings we're going to be using later in this video. All right. So now that we're on a chart, we're looking at the weekly chart of NASDAQ or NQ. And we're going to be talking about the first part of time frame alignment and your first step whenever you're doing top down analysis. So we're always going to want to map out the weekly and daily chart. So there are two primary focuses that I have when I'm looking at the weekly chart. Number one, I want to see how this recent candle reacted to the last candle. So notice how in this candle right here, right, that high, notice how that high was closed above by the next candle. And then what did the next week do? Well, it took out that previous week's high. So let's just say you were a day trader in that week. So let's take a look at that on the lower time frames. Let's just say if you came into that week, which started, it looks like right here, if you came into this week looking to buy under the open and trade under that previous week's high, that could have given you a draw on liquidity, right? Because if we're bullish on a weekly candle, you always want to be buying under the open in higher time frame levels and targeting out maybe the previous week's high because if the week is going to be bullish, if you're looking for that weekly candle to close bullish, well, most likely you're going to take out the previous candles high. It's a really easy target for intro week trading. All we want to pay attention to is how we reacted to the previous candles high or low. And it, it has to take it, right? So notice how in this one, we didn't take out the low, but we took out that high. So this can help us frame that the market's likely to go lower. So that is step one. You're always going to pay attention to how the current weekly candle or the most recent one reacted to the previous candles high or low. Next, you want to pay attention to the current leg in price. That means from the most recent swing low to the most recent high. Now in this one, you'll notice that there's really not much going on here. We don't have any fair value gaps. Now, if you don't know what a fair value gap is, it is just a gap between wicks. So notice how on this candle over here, we have a wick, a really big body candle that shows expansion and there's no wick right until up here. So this zone is a fair value gap. We look for that to be a level where the market is likely to bounce from and the market is likely to continue. What this is showing is that the market's energetically moving in one direction. Now, if you don't have that, like up here, we don't have that. So at that time, we don't really have any kind of areas to find support or to find a bounce from. Now we look for, well, if we don't have fair value gaps and the market is telling us it's likely to go lower, we can mark out these levels as potential targets, okay? So we've went on the weekly chart and notice how I'm not looking left. I'm not looking at all of these old levels. I'm paying attention to the current price action. Okay. It can really be easy to get lost in, 
in price if you're looking way back. And yes, we're above all-time highs, whatever. But just pay attention to what the market's doing right now because you're trading right now. You're not trading levels from you know four years ago, okay? Or two years ago, however long. You don't want to look that far left is my point. So if this candle is failing to displace or failing to close above this candle, well, we can look at this candle's low as a likely target. So we've done our weekly analysis, okay? Next, we're gonna go on the daily and we wanna pay attention to a couple things, okay? So I want you to always remember that the market is doing one of two things. It's either moving to a fair value gap or it's moving to a high or a low, okay? One of these two things is going on at all times on any time frame you're looking at. And the market likes to trade from, ex now when the market does this, when it moves from a fair value gap to a high or low, it is moving from internal range liquidity to external range liquidity. Because if you have a range or you know the area between two swing points like this, and then you form a fair value gap, well, the market is likely to go from this range, it went up here, it went to this external liquidity, which is a swing high, market traded back into internal liquidity, which is this fair value gap, and then where did it trade? Back to external liquidity. So you can count on the market to continuously do this, and if it doesn't do that, then it means that a reversal is imminent, right? So notice how we marked out some of these levels. We've got some of these levels from the weekly chart. This is that previous week's low, and this is just the low that the market could be trading towards based on that weekly chart. But notice how we're reacting here, okay? Is the market still respecting this internal range to external range? Well, so if we notice right here, the market took out this external range liquidity in the form of this high over here, these equal highs, right? What we wanna always pay attention to is a trick that I like to call displacement versus manipulation. So displacement really just means just that. It's a displacement in the market. It's a really big energetic move, usually leaving behind fair value gaps. So when the market stops displacing, like you notice how right here we displaced, what happened? Well, we ended up moving higher, right? Right here, we displaced up with a fair value gap. We ended up moving higher. If you look back, every time the market displaces, it tends to move higher. If you market, if the market displaces through recent structure, you can count on it to go back up to the high that it just made almost every time. So what happens when the market doesn't displace and we get manipulation? Well, the market just came up and grabbed this liquidity above this high, and then it fell back into the range. This is where you look for the market to start to reverse. Now, where is it likely to go? Well, back to internal range liquidity. Now, you might be asking, well, what if there is no internal range liquidity? Because in this example, there isn't. Well, then you're gonna look for it to go to the most recent swing point that caused that failure to displace. So in this example, it would just be this low right here that pushed us up to that high, but we know based on the weekly chart, we can look a little bit lower under these lows. So the next step I want you to do is to map order flow or displacement in the current leg only, right? So notice right here, we don't really have much to work with on this daily chart. But we've done our job and no matter what time frame pairing we're using, we're always going to use our daily and weekly charts to get our key levels. That doesn't matter if you're trading the one minute or the one hour, you always want to use the daily and the weekly chart. Now, a lot of times in the comments, people like to say, oh, in hindsight, but this was not in hindsight. I'm just going to show you that on March 10th over here, I called this before it happened. So I'm just going to use an example that I actually traded. I actually put out there before it happened and I called price because a lot of times people are so used to other educators on YouTube that just post, you know, hindsight analysis. Um, and that's not really me. So what I like to do is just use examples that I actually used that way I'm teaching you from experience. So the way I talked about this was over so the way I put it was overall, I think the way we reacted to the range high is very telling. That's what I was just talking about with this failure to displace and that manipulation, right? So if we failure, if we, so if we fail to displace, we're likely to go lower. If there's no fear value gaps to catch us, we're likely to move towards lows. So always be doing this on your higher time frames because this is gonna give you your bias for the week. Next, I talked about if we know the target is down, then where is the most obvious points of liquidity? Well, if we look that previous weekly low using the strategy we talked about before, but if we go up down, but let's hop down on a four hour. Well, what do we have right near that low? We have another low. So we know a lot of people are placing their stop loss there. So we know that there is a lot of liquidity down in this area, right? So now let's take a look at this chart compared to right here. I had marked out the failure to displace. If you look right there, failure to displace. And I said, anytime we fail to displace from a range, the draw on liquidity is in the opposite direction. Low hanging fruit is an easy target, but the equal lows are the most obvious area, right? So anytime the market is bearish, right? You're going to look at price in a bearish point, but this is where most traders fail. They start to just sell, right? And you might be thinking, well, you just said the market's bearish. Why wouldn't I sell? 
And that's just not how this works. So let's go back to our chart and break down the pillars of top-down analysis. Now notice, we are still on price. We haven't even talked about time. So we're gonna talk about time here in a second and how to time when the market is likely to be moving against your bias and when the market is likely to move with your bias, okay? So I'm gonna post up some of these time frame pairings that we talked about earlier. And what this means is that if you're doing higher time frame analysis in the way that we just did that daily, you're looking for that internal range liquidity to external, you're gonna use these pairing, you're gonna use these time frames as the pairs you're gonna be using, right? So you're always operating in the context of that daily and weekly, no matter what selection you're using here. So in this example, whenever I'm trading, if I'm trading uh, day trading like intraday entries, I'm using the one minute, right? So if I'm using the one minute, then I'm gonna use the 15 minute for my levels, right? For my bias. But we don't wanna just skip all the way down from the daily to the 15 minute. So I'm gonna use that four hour down to the 15 minute. So notice how this works. Take a screenshot of this. Make sure you have these time frame pairings written down. So if we're using four hour fair value gaps like this, we're gonna use the 15 minute time frame to confirm when that fair value gap is turning around because what we want is the market to trade into our levels, but then we want the market to shift on the lower time frame, right? And then we're gonna look on the lower time frame for something we like to call a market maker model. Now we're gonna go over that in a second. I know some of you guys have heard about that before, but for those of you who haven't, don't worry, we're going to explain all of it. So we have this failure to displace on the daily and just overall in this range. So we can mark that out and we know that the market is likely to be bearish based on our weekly and daily analysis. So if the market is likely to be bearish based on that weekly analysis, we're gonna look for the market to move from internal liquidity in the form of fair value gaps to external liquidity, right? So all we're trying to do is catch a move from this area down into that external liquidity we found on the higher time frame. Because once you form a bias on the higher time frame, you're just looking to dissect it on the lower time frames. You know, you're operating in the context that we're going down and you're just looking to try to get a piece of the action. And every time you come to your desk in the day, you don't necessarily need to catch the whole move, right? You could just catch from here to here and make a lot of money. Right? You don't need to catch everything. You don't need to be trading the entire move. You don't have to be doing all that. You just don't. That's the beauty of day trading, right? You want to work maybe an hour a day at the most, okay? When we're looking at this, we have this key level here on our charts. So what we're going to do next is wait for a market maker model. So what is a market maker model is going to be a set of three consolidations with the top one reversing. So what you want to see on the lower time frame is this kind of price action, but you want to make sure that we're seeing this in context. So you don't want to just look for patterns. You don't want to be a pattern trader and just look for this by itself. You want to look for this occurring into a higher time frame level. So let's say if you were looking at this was the M1 or the one minute chart, well, you'd want to see a 15 minute fair value gap that we're trading into. And you want to make sure you're trading in context, right? So let's say if this red is the higher time frame. So if we're looking at the market, and let's say the market went from the higher time frame it traded into some internal range liquidity, came down and took out a low, which would be external range liquidity. When we're retracing into the next fair value gap, we can go into our next time frame down and look for a market maker model. Now, once this market maker model is confirmed, and on this third consolidation, we form a little range, we fake out to the upside, and then we break down to the downside with displacement, right? With displacement and we form nice fair value gaps here, every time the market trades lower, right? Every time this happens, we're just looking for a short-term little range to build up and then another fake out and then trade down. Range, fake out, and then trade down. All you're looking at at this point, once you've done all your homework, is you're looking at these lower time frame fair value gaps and you can enter on any one of these, literally. You could enter here and target out the lows. You could enter wherever you can get good enough risk to reward. Where you want to always put your stop losses is above the most recent sweep, right? So if the market sweeps up and you were to enter down on this fair value gap, you'd put your stop loss above there. Or if you're entering here, you'd put your stop loss there, okay? So you're just looking for that lower time frame market maker model to form inside of a higher time frame fair value gap in context of your overall bias. That's all ICT really is. Now, how do we raise the probability? Because you might be thinking, well, this happens a lot. And you're right. A lot of times this will happen and you will get it wrong. So how do you not get it wrong? Well, it's pretty simple. We're going to talk about time. Now, time is just as important as price. So let's hop right into it. So let's talk about the power of three and quarterly theory, right? Quarterly theory is by Trader Day. I'll leave his link down in the description. Good friend of mine, awesome trader. 
he came up with this way to talk about the power of three. Okay, the power of three essentially is AMD. And it's just stating that the market is always in one of three cycles. This is gonna be accumulation, right? Manipulation, which is in the opposite direction of your bias, and then distribution, which is where the market is moving to that overall higher time frame target. So for example, see how we had an accumulation right here. Let's go on a lower time frame, we can see it better. We had an accumulation, a manipulation against the overall bias, and then distribution, right, down to liquidity. So the power of the power of three, <laughs> no pun intended there, is that we're able to use time to identify when we are in each cycle. So the idea is that we want to sell above the true open when we're bearish, or we want to buy below it if we're bullish. So if we break up each range in time, we're able to plot out a line that is a true opening price, and it's not the opening price of the candle. So pay close attention, I'm gonna show you how to find this. So let me just go ahead and drop these times for you. So the true open for the weekly candle, which means let's say if you're bullish on the week, well, you wanna be buying below the true opening price. So all these times are going to be in New York time. So Monday at 1800 or 6 p.m. for you guys who don't know how to do this kind of time. Anyways, <laughs> and then each day, you're gonna look for midnight as an open, right? So midnight, 12 a.m. New York time, and that's gonna be for the daily candle. So if you're trying to catch the daily range, you wanna buy below the daily open or above it. If you're trying to catch the weekly range, you wanna you want to buy below the true open or above it, which is Monday at 6 p.m. And this is just the price that is occurring at this time. And I'll show you how to mark this out. So just give me a second. Now for London session, it is 1.30 a.m. And the New York session, which is what I trade, is 7.30 a.m. So let's just say you're bearish on the New York session. Well, when the market comes above that 7.30 a.m. opening price, you should see the market trade into some kind of higher time frame level and then trade lower. Now, what this is likely to be is that market maker model. When you're looking for this last consolidation with the sweep, you should be seeing this occur. You should be seeing this occur above the true open if you're bearish right the true open might have been right here it has to be above it now if you're bullish it could be below it i'm not going to draw two examples because that would be redundant and a waste of your time and i value your time so i'm not going to do that now not only do we need to have these reversals or these market maker models happen above or below these key levels we need to have them happen at certain times of day or certain times of the session or times of the week so for the weekly, the true session open is Monday at 1800 or 6 p.m. And you wanna see the reversal happen between Tuesday to Thursday. Now for the daily reversal, you wanna see that happen between 12 a.m. midnight to 1030 a.m., okay? So you wanna see that third point right here happening at this time. It's very, very important you wanna see that reversal happening at that time. Now for the London session, if you wanna break this down just to sessions, which is what I do to get more precise, you wanna see this happen between 1.30 a.m. and 4.30 a.m. Or for New York session, you wanna see it happen between 7.30 a.m. or 10.30 a.m. Now it's very important that you're using this together. Now I know it may seem like a lot, but you're not gonna be using all of this at once. Let's just say if you're trading the New York session, you're just gonna be finding your higher time frame bias, looking for that fair value gap that you're gonna trade into, your lower time frame market maker model that can occur at these times, that's it, okay? So what does this mean the x amd or amdx so we're going to take it even a step further and you're going to be able to predict whether or not the market is likely to push or whether it's likely to consolidate so x amd stands for reversal or continuation and then accumulation manipulation distribution now this is the same thing except it has the reversal or continuation at the end now how do you determine what's likely to happen so let's say the market consolidates during the asian session well you're likely to get a manipulation or a move against your bias in the London session. And then you're likely to get a retracement of that move, right? Which is the part of the distribution during the New York session. And that would be AMDX, right? Now let's say if the Asian session was rallying, well, then we're gonna expect consolidation in the London session, and we're gonna expect a raid or a liquidity run in the New York session, and then the market to continue or reverse depending on if it's hit its higher time frame target. So now that we've went over that, with that in mind, we know that we're looking at the market in this fair value gap or this general zone. So if you found that four hour fair value gap, you can look for other key levels. Like right here, we can mark out a breaker block on the one hour. So just to show you that I was actually calling this before price happened, you can look here. This was the date on the 12th. And I was saying that we were expecting a move higher up above the liquidity that was formed. I'm going to show you this picture on the chart so you can see it. I just want to show you that I'm actually calling the market. This is in the Discord where I am helping traders by 
looking at all the trades that they journal. I'm holding them accountable to change their habits. I'm trading with them live three days a week. I mean, I'm doing every last thing that you could do to help somebody win at trading. They're posting their report cards. They're getting access to everything from myself all the way to the best-selling trading author, Jared Tendler, who is a licensed psychologist who hops on calls to coach them every week. I mean, we're even creating a full on ebook of the program. So pretty cool stuff. But I just wanted to show you that I did call the market before it happened. Again, I'm not trying to show this to show off. It's just important that whoever you're learning from, whether it's me or whether it's someone else, that you know they're actually calling the market and they're actually trading. Now, if you ever have interest in being able to submit trades to your mentor in a journal for me to review or to trade with me live three days a week or to have direct access to me one-on-one -on -one to build out your trading plan, then go ahead and click the link in the description. You can hop on a call with me or my team and see if you qualify. And look, not everybody's gonna qualify because we do guarantee results if you do qualify. But if you're a serious trader who is ready to take action right now, then go ahead and click the link in the description and I look forward to working with you. So let's take a look back over here at what we were talking about. Again, get a fresh picture right here. We were looking for the market to trade into this low first as the low hanging fruit and then eventually trade back into these levels. So as the market came down, the market traded into that low pretty quickly. And then what, right? Then we're going to be looking at this range. Now, this is the picture that I sent in the Discord. I said I was looking for the market to trade above this high right here, which was right under that four hour fair value gap and trade higher into that breaker, okay? So we've already talked about why, which is just that the higher time frame is likely to go from that external range liquidity up to the internal range liquidity, okay? So once the market went back into that level, remember what we're looking for is that higher time frame level, and then we're looking for that lower time frame market maker model. Now notice, Right here, we only had one consolidation here. And remember the market maker model, we wanna see at least three consolidations. So why wouldn't we have expected the market to reverse right here? Well, we did have time on our side in sense of when this is likely to occur, right? It's happening on a Tuesday. We said we're looking for these reversals on Tuesday to Thursday. So let's mark out that true week open. So if we go to Monday at 1800, right? Where is Monday at 1800? Right there. You would go to the opening price of that candle. You can just use a 15 minute chart, go to the opening price, push that out to the side, and that would be the true week open or TWO. Okay, so we're above that. We're on a day that checks out, but look, we don't have price agreement. Now, it's very important you have price agreement. So what happens? Well, the market will likely come up and sweep out any kind of early traders. Right? So notice how that happened, right? Here was our second consolidation. We had to run above that consolidation. So once the market ran above that consolidation, that is where the market maker model was likely to form. And look, we traded right into that one hour breaker that we had talked about in the Discord. So as soon as the market shifted down right here, as soon as we got that market structure shift, all you're doing is coming into the market and looking to sell, okay? You're looking to sell above true session opens. So, so as soon as that happens, you're just looking to sell, right? As soon as the market is pushing down, but every time the market comes into any fair value gap and it's above that true session open, that is going to be a high probability sell anytime that happens. Because once the market has put in that market maker model on your 15 minute time frame, or if you're just using any of the time frame pairs we went through earlier, it's all the same. But once you're on one side of the market maker model, you're just seeking out only that side. Every time the market trades into a fair value gap, you're going to look for your lower time frame for some kind of entry model like a market structure shift or any of the seven entry models that I go over with my students. So for kill zones, what we're going to be looking at. So when it comes to kill zones, you really just want to be day trading within two sessions, and that's going to be London and New York. So for London, you would just be looking at 1.30 a.m. to 4.30 a.m. because that is when we're likely to make that reversal. And for New York, you're just gonna be looking at 7.30 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. Now, for me, I just like trading 9 to 10.30 because really that's all you need, preferably right after that equity open at 9.30 if you're trading futures like I am. But if you're trading Forex, really any time within these windows, that is when you want to be trading. So only take trades if you're trading the lower time frames in these time windows. So last but not least is our economic calendar. So we have red folder news and no news, okay? So when we're looking at red folder news, what we're gonna expect is volatility. Now, a lot of people get scared away by this and I see a lot of gurus out there saying, oh, I don't trade red folder news. Well, my question is, are you really a day trader? Because day traders need volatility, okay? 
Now, I want to be clear, don't be stupid and don't go just put on 10 contracts or some massive position before a red folder news event and then say, well, Casper told me to, okay, because I didn't. I'm telling you not to do that, all right? Use common sense here, but we want to trade on the days where there is red folder news, okay? It's going to provide larger daily ranges and larger daily ranges are going to give you more room to make money, okay? So now, not all red folder news are the same. The ones you really want to watch out for are NFP, CPI, or inflation, PPI, which is also based on inflation, but those elections and FOMC. Now, this is where you definitely don't want to be in a trade when these numbers get released. No news days lack volatility and they're likely to accumulate, right? So you'll notice, let's say if you look at the calendar and there is no news, like right now, this week upcoming, so we're likely to get lower probability price action here and then get that sweep later in the week. Now, if we look at last week, which is where I marked out, look, we had a lot of news, right? And we saw that reversal when there was a lot of news. So we're going to be looking for the top of these market maker models. Look right here. It was on Wednesday and the market came back over. We're looking for that during high impact news. Now, if you want free access to this newsletter, this is what I was showing you guys earlier. This is where I put a lot of stuff out. It's all for free. I send out all the weekly outlooks, send it to over 50,000 people. I'll leave the link in the description for that as well. So if you want to sign up for that, great. But that's it for this video, guys. Make sure to subscribe. And if you're ever interested in me, you know, reviewing all the trades that you journal, going through each and every one, finding the mistakes that you're making, calling them out. And then after that, trading with you live three days a week and building your trading plan, then click the link in the description and let's hop on a call to see if you qualify. There are guaranteed results if you do. But again, make sure to subscribe, like the video, let me know in the comments if this video made sense or any other topics you want me to cover. And I appreciate you guys for watching. And just a friendly reminder, trading is hard. So anytime you're stressed out, you know, just, just realize that's part of it. I know that I was stressed out for years. It took me a long time to get to where I'm at. So just don't ever give up. You know, only the only time you lose is when you give up. So just wanted to leave you guys with that thought and always be striving to get better. Always hold yourself accountable and really treat this like a business because if you treat this like a business and you're tracking your data, you're taking it serious and you never give up, then you're destined to win. So that's it for this one, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.